Hello, mathematicians. I'm Aiden Gonzalez, and I'm a recently graduated high school math student working with Skew the Script on a few of the algebra lessons. Today, we're going to be talking about a parabola that influenced years of American economic policy. Let's skew it. Today, we're going to talk about quadratic equations using the vertex form. This is lesson 4.2 in our algebra course sequence. In 1974, during a dinner argument with the Ford administration, economist Art Laffer draws a curve on a napkin. You can see the napkin and the curve uh, at the left. His claim was cutting tax rates can increase tax revenue. The napkin drawing became known as the Laffer curve, and it had a huge influence on President Ronald Reagan's tax cuts and still influences tax debates today. Today's key analysis will be, can cutting tax rates actually raise tax revenue? You can follow along using the guided notes at the URL below. The first topic we're gonna to be talking about is the Laffer parabola. Taxes have been a persistent debate in American politics. Pro-tax arguments include creating equity through investments in education, public goods, and social services. It also says that government spending can stimulate the economy. Anti-tax arguments say that it's unfair for the government to take from people's hard-earned income. They say that taxes de-incentivize work and that hurts the economy. The Reagan revolution was a huge moment in the history of American tax policy. Ronald Reagan was president from 1981 to 1989, and he was famous for his supply side economic policies. Supply side economics include lowering taxes, decreasing regulation and promoting more free trade in order to create jobs, lower prices on goods and grow and stimulate the economy. The problem with supply side economics is that lower taxes mean less revenue, so the government goes into debt. Greg Mankiw is a supply side economics, a White House advisor under the Bush administration, a Harvard professor, and a huge fan of cutting taxes. He says that we should cut government spending, and if you can't cut spending, some debt's okay as long as the economy is still growing. Some debt is okay is hard to sell in politics, and it's even harder to cut government spending. So, Art Laffer says that lowering tax rates may mean more tax revenue. This sounds good, but how is that possible? It all has to do with this drawing, which is the same drawing as uh, what he wrote on the napkin, which kind of looks like a parabola. Let's explore his model. We're gonna draw the Laffer curve on this graph. Our y-axis is our tax revenue, the total amount of money paid to the government. It's important to note that we're using small numbers. We can see that the maximum tax revenue is $10,000. The actual tax revenue generated by the government using tax, using taxes money um, is much higher than $10,000, but we're gonna keep uh, the numbers small to keep things manageable. Our x-axis is our tax rate, the percent of income that people have to pay in taxes. A, are there any points that we know for certain? Yes, we know two points. If the tax rate is 0%, no taxes are collected. The tax revenue is $0. Similarly, if the tax rate is 100%, no one would work because the government takes all that you earn. Again, the tax revenue is $0. But what about all the space in between? That's where our Laffer curve comes in. We can see that this is the curve on the blackboard in the napkin, just sideways. B, why does revenue increase on the left side? As tax rates increase, people pay a higher percentage of their income in taxes, so the government makes more money. Why does tax revenue decrease on the right side? As tax rates get really high and approach that 100%, people feel less of an incentive to work since the government takes most of their earnings. Many people work less or stop working altogether. They begin making little to no money and tax revenue declines. So if there's a 90% tax rate on $0, you get uh, the government makes $0. According to Laffer, which side was the United States on? Which side of the Laffer curve was the United States on? Remember that Laffer claimed that lowering tax rates would increase tax revenue. He claimed lowering tax rates would lead to more tax revenue. So he thought that we were on the right side. He thought our taxes were too high to get maximum revenue. Although the concept of the Laffer curve didn't immediately catch on, it greatly influenced President Ronald Reagan. When he took office, he appointed Laffer as an economic advisor. Soon after, Reagan and Congress lowered tax rates. Was Laffer right? 
To evaluate, let's first turn his idea into a mathematical model. That leads us to topic two, vertex form. Vertex form is another way of writing quadratic equations. It's most useful when we're interested in the vertex or the tip of the parabola. We're gonna be using the quadratic, uh, the vertex form when evaluating the Laffer curve because Laffer wanted the tax rate that led to the maximum tax revenue, the vertex. Before we get into the Laffer curve, let's analyze this equation. Y is equal to negative one times the quantity X minus two squared plus three. Our vertex form is Y is equal to A times the quantity X minus H squared plus K. For A, if A is positive, the parabola opens upwards. If A is negative, the parabola opens downwards. In our example, A is equal to negative one, which tells us that the parabola opens downwards because A is negative. Our H is our X coordinate of the vertex and our K is the Y coordinate of our vertex. In our example, H is equal to two. It's not equal to negative two because in our formula, H is subtracted. We subtract in our example, H equals two from X. If we saw in our parentheses X plus two, then H would be negative two because subtracting a negative makes a positive. But in our example, we see X minus two, so H is equal to positive two. And K is equal to three. So our vertex is equal to two, three. And that lines up with what we can see in our graph. So here we have our Laffer curve in vertex form. Y is equal to negative four times the quantity X minus 50 squared plus 10,000. When Reagan took office, the top marginal tax rate was around 70%. What was the predicted tax revenue from a 70% tax rate? It's important to note that not all incomes are taxed at the same rate, but for simplicity's sake, we'll make this assumption. At a 70% tax rate, we're gonna plug in 70 for X. So we have 70 minus 50 in our parentheses, which is equal to 20. We're gonna square 20 to get 400, and then we're gonna multiply 400 by negative four to get negative 1,600 plus 10,000, which is equal to $8,400. At a 70% tax rate, we raise $8,400. $8, to maximize tax revenue, should the tax rate increase or decrease? Why? 70% is right of the vertex. So lowering tax rates should increase tax revenue. What tax rate maximizes revenue? This question is asking, what's the vertex? Our vertex form, uh, general formula is y is equal to a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, and our vertex is our h k. So we can just find our h and our k in our example, in our, in our Laffer curve vertex form, to find the vertex. So h is 50 and k is 10,000. So our vertex is 50, 10,000, which so it says that we achieve the maximum tax revenue, which is $10,000, at a 50% tax rate. Note that Laffer was not very specific about the actual tax rate he thought was ideal. We're just assuming, given the symmetrical curve drawings, that he suggests that it may have been 50%. So in 1981, Reagan signs the Economic Recovery Tax Act. Taxes for the highest income levels dropped from 70% to 50%, and other income brackets also saw lower tax rates. What happened to the tax revenue? That leads us to our discussion for today. Unfortunately for Laffer, tax revenue fell after tax cuts. In 1981, tax revenue per person in 2021 dollars was $9,012. We are using the average revenue per person to control for population growth, and we're using 2021 dollars to control for inflation. We're doing this so we'll know that revenue changes are from real economic factors rather than the population growth or inflation. So in the first year of Reagan's presidency, 1981, before his tax cut took effect, the tax revenue per person adjusted for inflation was $9,012. We're gonna be using this as our baseline. After tax cuts, revenue fell and it fell again. And it vacillated for a few over the years, but never got back quite as high as in 1981 pre-tax cuts. In the last year of Reagan's presidency, 1989, the revenue was still below the pre-tax cut amount. Back to our old friend, Professor Greg Mankiw, um, the supply side economist, uh, very established um, economist, 
also the country's most successful economics textbook author. And if you're taking AP um, economics, you might be using his textbook. And he says in his textbook that subsequent history failed to confirm Laffer's conjecture. When Reagan cut taxes after he was elected, the result was less tax revenue, not more. Revenue from personal income taxes per person adjusted for inflation, which we did, fell by 9% from 1980 to 1984, even though the average income grew by 4% over this period. What do the other experts say? Luckily, we know. The University of Chicago polled economists from across the political spectrum on questions related to taxes. The, economist, ex the expert economists were given this statement, a tax cut in the United States would lead to economic growth, and they were asked whether they agreed or disagreed with the statement. 43% agreed, 9% disagreed, and the other half were uncertain. It's kind of a mixed bag on opinions, leaning towards agree, but no true consensus. They asked another statement. A tax cut in the United States would lead to higher tax revenue, and the University of Chicago asked these experts if they agreed or disagreed with the statement. This is the Laffer claim that a tax cut would lead to higher tax revenue. 96% of the experts disagreed. The other 4% said they were uncertain and no one agreed. The consensus is that these economists, uh, economics experts disagreed with the Laffer claim. They said, one professor said, not aware of any evidence in recent history where tax cuts actually raise revenue. Sorry, Laffer. Another said the moon landing was real, evolution exists. Tax cuts lose revenue. The research has shown this a thousand times. Enough already. That did not happen in the past. No reason to think it would happen now. May look plausible on a cocktail napkin or at a cocktail party, but not true empirically in the United States. However, high income Americans at the top tax bracket have the highest tax rates. According to Professor Mankiw, tax revenue among the rich actually rose when taxes were cut by Reagan. You're gonna discuss in class, part A and part B. Part A, prior to the tax cuts, on which side of the Laffer curve, the left or the right, do you believe the richest Americans were located? How can you tell? And part B, is a higher tax revenue enough of a reason to justify lowering tax rates for the rich? Why or why not? That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me to talk about the Laffer curve and quadratic equations. And I hope to see you next time on Skew the Script. 